Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on the J72 Gaming Channel. My name is Jacob and you can just call me J here. Today we've got a brand new game that just came out, Prehistoric Kingdom, just released for alpha version if you uh, purchase their upgraded version. And right off the bat I just want to say a big thank you to the Prehistoric Kingdom team. Uh, there was an issue kind of behind the scenes with my, uh, my code and all that and they were incredibly speedy in helping me uh, get it upgraded and all worked out and whatnot. So mad thanks to them. Really good to see... Uh, a company and a team be so um, easy to work with basically with with their customers so big fan on that uh, so I want to dive into a brand new park here and kind of show you guys what the plan is for this series and what we're gonna do with our park here so right off the bat here let me dive into the way to show you all of our dinosaurs so I've messed around in here just like I don't know, about 10, 15 or so minutes. Um, but I learned that if you place this thing down, it will probably move all this and make it look nicer. But this just allows us to dive into the actual dinosaurs here. Uh, we, oh, I've got to power it real quick. Uh, so this is going to be in um, creative mode. So money isn't going to matter too much. I think, it, I think it still gives us money down the bottom right. Um, but uh, Or down the bottom left here. we got to... <clears throat> just a little bit there uh, but yeah if we click here we can open the genetics lab and this will show you all the dinosaurs that we have to work with so the way i'm thinking we go about this park is i'm gonna have eight exhibits and the way i figured that out is obviously we only have five different dinosaurs here but if you go into the tyrannosaurus i actually realized they've got different skins for the tyrannosaurus right so and what's really cool is that they are actually different not only are they different skins for the dinosaurs but you can see down here in the bottom the exhibit the exhibit uh, and their preferences for the dinosaurs, they will actually change. Um, mainly the scorched one here uh, needs a little bit of a, what it looks like, a little bit of a hotter climate, uh, which makes sense because it kind of looks all deserty. So basically what I'm going to be doing is going through here and we're going to make an exhibit of every single dinosaur type that is in the game, both species as well as habitat that it needs and if you guys have checked out my parkosaurus series you'll know that i'm a huge fan of working with a open palette here and really terraforming and making the park kind of like a theme park right um very similar to like disneyland or another amusement park where you've got different sections that are themed off so we might have like a desert area over here we might have like a rainforest over here uh, maybe like a prairie over here and a swamp um I'll, I'll take a look at what the game has and what the dinosaurs need and we'll go from there uh but for the first episode i'm really going to focus in right here on the start we're going to get a nice little fountain area probably some sort of plaza uh maybe some shops and, and food uh so i'll get that all up and running off screen and then I'll bring you guys in for the first exhibit. So let me zoom in here. And when we zoom back out, we will then have a bunch of people and the plaza. So check it out, guys. So I've played for about an hour or so. Kind of got my hands uh, dirty, if you will, right? With the, the tools of the game, the different um, trees, the different plants we have, the different biomes. So I think I've got a little bit better idea now with this game than when I uh, did that intro just this few uh, minutes ago for you guys. Um, let me take you guys over here to... Uh, first off, look how huge this map is. They give you so much space. It's amazing. But if you come over here, I've kind of got a bit of a painter's palette, if you will. Um, so this shows you the four different terrains that we have, or the um, ecosystems that we have, different biomes. And uh, if I go here, let's see, it is in... Uh... To do landscaping you see down here in the bottom right we only have access to four of the types of environments that they're going to have in the main game in the main game they're going to have eight so right now we only have tropical wetland scrubland and temperate uh, eventually they'll be adding desert grassland coastal and taiga um, but right now we only have these four so if you take a look at wetland something that i found out with this game which is amazing and i'm a huge fan of this is not only can you modularly place individual trees, but you can come in here and kind of use, if you guys know Jurassic World Evolution, it allows you to paint with the tree brush and it puts down multiple different types of trees. In that game, that's all you can really do. I mean, you can place single trees and it kind of you know gets confusing and it obstructs it very often. But in this one, you can say, oh, let's see, I'm going to want elm trees. Let's get some, uh, maybe some seasonal birch trees in there. And uh, let's grab this type of bush, right? And then you just paint. And based off of your density, it'll it'll just add all of those trees, and you only get 
trees of those types. So it, it can really speed up building a habitat when you want to kind of do um, stylized randomization with your trees and stuff. And so that's amazing. So what I've done here is I've clicked every single tree and every single bush of all the different types of terrain. So you can see here, this is all actually let me get that back up so I don't misspeak here. So this is all the tropical trees. And I even added the types of substrates and the grounds that the tropical area is going to have as well. This one over here, this is the wetland trees and the wetland um, template. And then over here, we've got our scrubland, which is a little bit more sparse, kind of cool, um, a little bit more sands and, and white, white stuff going on there. And then over here is the temperate um, with a lot more muds and stuff like that. So basically, with these four templates, we're going to make four sections of the park. And I have figured out where I want everything to go and kind of what we can do with it to get the most out of the alpha that what to work with what we have, basically. So starting out of this um, plaza here, you can see I've got two areas. This one over here is going to take you to the temperate area. So I'm going to delete a lot of these trees and make this kind of a temperate forest. And that's where we're going to put uh, most of our T-Rexes actually are going to be in there. I think all of them except for one are going to be hiding in there. And I also realized that I, earlier I said we we're going to have eight exhibits. We're going to actually have a little bit more. We're going to have one for every single type of dinosaur uh, and every type of skin for that dinosaur. So we might end up with like 20 or so exhibits. I'm not I'm not sure, but it'll be it'll be kind of fun to, to design them all out. So yeah, we're going to have temperate over here. Over here, we're going to kind of merge that into the, let me not me speak again, um, into the scrubland. So we'll have a temperate forest, big bushy forest, kind of gets a little bit more sparse here into the scrubland. Uh, and then as we get over here, we will transition into uh, probably the wetland. Um, and then from the wetland on the other side, we will have tropical. So it'll all kind of merge together and look look more or less realistic, which which will be fun. So let me uh, let me dive into here, and I'll probably knock out a bunch of these trees and give us kind of a, a clean palette. And let's start working on the first dinosaur exhibit and get these T Rexes up and running, because that's really what we all want to see. All right, everybody, so I've got the walls up and a little bit of terraforming. I also want to show you this guy, this mountain here. So I'm figuring we're going to have a, basically a temperate forest mountain. So this whole area with all the um, all the dinosaurs that go in that area will have that. And then I ran, ran a little uh, river kind of out this way into where the swamp is. So this uh, over here in the middle, this will be kind of the, uh, this, the open prairie area. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then have a swamp, and then that leans into the rainforest over on that side. So we will get there. But first things first, let's go over here. I don't really know how big the exhibits need to be in this uh, game. Um, this seems pretty large, but also realistic. So I went for it. Um, yeah, not really sure. But I wanted to bring you guys in here to kind of start building. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole build with you guys, just because, honestly, it's going to take me multiple hours. I get really detailed when it comes to these games, and I really like diving into um, placing each tree and each bush where it needs to go, you know, stuff like that. But I do have an idea here with some water. So let's, uh, let's bring the size of this water down a little bit, and the depth of the water can be eh, moderate. Let's do that. Um, if this would be kind of like a little bit of a mountain, I kind of want to get it so that the water comes through around here and then pools up in this area so that when the guests are looking at it, they have uh, the dinosaur in the in the water. So something I've realized is it gets a little iffy if you start up, like the elevation of the water in this game gets a little iffy if you start up here. Um, I'd show you, but it, it destroys the terrain and all that. So the, the way to work it is to kind of start at the... Whoa saving hitch there start at the um, lowest elevation here so we'll go like this we'll get a little bit of a water pond and then we'll kind of go off in this direction and i always come back and kind of try to smooth it out because it makes it look really circular which i'm not a big fan of uh, so you come through here and you can see it messes with the terrain just a little bit which is fine and then you can always come through here um, with the smoothing tool uh, where's that guy? This guy right here. And kind of smooth these edges out here around the water to make everything look a little bit more natural. And most of this will cover with trees anyway um, and whatnot. So so that's that. Uh, a good tip I have for messing with the water, if you want it to look a little bit more realistic and not always the same size, uh, come through with the remove water tool and kind of just scratch off the edges here 
and if you kind of knock them off at different angles, different sides, you can really kind of add some variety to your your river or your stream or your lake or whatever whatever you're designing. Uh, so we'll just go a little bit of this, a little bit of there. This this one over here, I'm actually okay with it being kind of circular because it's kind of the edge of the pond where he'll be hanging out. Um, so we'll make it a little bit smaller and maybe like that. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so that's going to be our water feature. And let me go in through here and select some of the substrate. Now, this game does have automatic slope painting. Um, I'm not really sure what it is, and I kind of wanted to explore it with you guys right now. So let's just go ahead and paint with this and kind of see what happens um, on the slope here. It says automatic. I wonder if it's based off of elevation. If it's steeper, it gets more rocky. Uh, it doesn't quite look like that. Maybe I have to click two. Mm, or maybe just elevation rock. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, because that makes it rock. I'm not really sure what this automatic paint sloping is. Um, but anyway, I do I do want the edges of this to be a little bit rocky. And um, the top can be a little rocky as well. So let me... Give me a little bit of... Give me five minutes or so, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna deck this place out with some substrate and make the terrain look a little bit nicer. All right. There we have it. A little bit of terrain designing here what's that tree doing did i miss one i missed one let's get rid of that guy you're not supposed to be here <laughs> so do tree removal and bye all right <laughs> now that we got rid of that so what i want to do right now guys is kind of um i'll build one little small area let's say uh let's say like right here and kind of I'll explain to you guys how I design uh, or how my thought process goes while designing out um, exhibits for zoos and parks and, and all that. So really what I start with is what you've what you've already seen. And so I start with the, the terrain. I think that's the really, really good spot to start because uh, it's it's macro, right? You want to build off the big stuff first. And then um, I always get the water features in. Then do what you saw there. I kind of mess with the terrain. And um, and that's just kind of a default terrain for now. I will definitely come through after I add the trees and really deck out um, underneath it because it's really good to have the leaf litter underneath the trees. It makes everything look much better. Um, but from there, I go through and I like to plant the actual physical trees. Now, what's cool about this game is that it allows me to do both picking specific trees as well as, like I showed you over in the template area, uh, kind of just paint some trees. So really with this game, I get to do kind of a mixture. So I'm thinking you really want to kind of have some main features and then from there you can kind of fill in the outside. So I want this area to, right here to be a little bit open in the water. So we'll kind of deck out the surrounding areas, put the biggest trees in first. I'll kind of put those around here, and again, I'll I'll come through and do all this area um, kind of on my own, but I want to I'm gonna stick to right here with you guys, um, and then we'll probably have some elm trees. Uh, are they? Is that elm? Is that what that? Called? Yeah, elm trees. Let's have elm elm trees kind of line the um, line the hill here, and just kind of plop them around. I'll come through with bushes in the in the middle. Um, this game also has a line to surface, which is nice because um, you can get those angled like that. Um, but you want to kind of mix in your angled ones as well as your your straight up up and down ones. You can also tell I'm I'm hitting Z here just to kind of mix things up. Uh, I I really like it. I think it helps. You know, you, if you have everything facing the same way, you'll actually start to notice that they're all the same model. But if you rotate them all ever so slightly, um, it definitely helps the eye not notice that. Um, so, yep, so first thing I do is I just plop down a bunch of trees here. That looks more or less pretty good. Uh, then let's go into the shrubbery. Um, the shrubbery for here, I'm going to want to stick with kind of this bush and um, this guy right here. So this guy and this guy are kind of going to be our, our main working tools. If I can come back over here. I can show you guys a little bit of a close-up of what I had worked on in this area. Now this area is basically temperate, but of course it's got a, a pond here. So I added some cattails and... Um, uh, some white cattails, whatever those are called, uh, and then these these bushes look really good. And I added some, you know, down logs, and that, that's what I'm talking about with the temp. Um, the uh, what am I saying? The uh, <laughs> the t uh, the substrate, uh, the leaf litter underneath the trees of that substrate looks really good. Um, and so that's what I'm going to kind of replicate over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab 
some arrowwood bushes and I really like to kind of mainly stick my bushes underneath the trees. Um, I think it looks a little bit realistic, um, but again, it does, just, does depend on what you're going for in your exhibits. So if you're looking for a kind of open field, then you might want just a few bushes here and there. Um, but generally just kind of dotting them around really does help the overall vibe of the forest that you're going for. Uh, this part can be kind of tedious, but luckily this game does have that um, that tool. And in fact, let's let's use that tool for the second half here, so you guys can see kind of both ways to do it. So let's let's pick both our bushes here and take off tree removal. Yeah, it was off. Okay. Nope, it's on. Let's make sure that's gone. And let's make the size a little bit smaller so I can accurately work with this. I can increase the density just a bit and just kind of start dotting bushes in a little bit randomly. So this can definitely help in the in the back sections of the park, but I would recommend physically placing your bushes and your trees um, in the main section. So the main viewing points, uh, you always want, in my opinion, you always want to make sure you kind of look what your guests can see, uh, even though they can't see very well, uh, but eh, it is what it is, um, and make sure that the viewpoints look really good. So. Specifically, my thought is kind of this angle. You know, that's why I put the three basic trees instead of just dotting them around randomly. I think it looks it looks a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and kind of dot a little bit more in here, and probably just a few out in the open grass. Looks pretty good. All right, and then very last thing I always go for is the rocks. The rocks, in my opinion, really kind of bring the game, or bring the whole thing together, the whole design. So let's go ahead and where is it? Modular pieces, rocks and sticks. And let's grab, yeah, just some small ones over here. Maybe this guy. Um, this one's kind of like a mound. I like that. Let's throw this in kind of in this area, I think. Let's actually spit it this way. And uh, just grab a few more. Here, there, everywhere. A little bit of rock. Doesn't hurt ever. Sometimes I feel like Bob Ross. You get a rock, you get a rock. Happy little rocks. <laughs> uh, and then that place looks a little bit barren with just the rocks. So I'm going to come through here and make sure I grab some bushes and really kind of fill this place out and make it look a little bit more natural, but also not block. Let's get like three bushes. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. All right. So yeah, that's basically my, my design philosophy, guys. I go through and I, I make it um, look as good as possible in each little spot. Uh, and then you can kind of fill in the back end with kind of just randomness uh, with that paint tool. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to a time lapse here. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy it. I'll put some cool music to it and we'll kind of design this out. And at the very end, we'll come through and finally actually get to look at a dinosaur. <laughs> so uh, sit back, kick back, grab a snack and enjoy the time lapse. And I will meet back with you guys in a few minutes or so.
right, folks. <clears throat> the exhibit is done. Got the T-Rex pen all set up. This one's going to house um, a breeding pair. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to breed in this game, but they will be a male and female. So let's go ahead and see what's up with this uh, right here. Um, I have not done this yet, so let's see how it works. Let's go back here. Let's go to T-Rex. We're going to get some leather hides. With like a male uh looks like you can't change the age um, a lot of, again this is alpha so a lot of things actually aren't in the game um so we're only able to do what we can um so we're gonna go ahead and yep incubate one of these just looks like it goes pretty quick and get a female as well and once that's all said and done we'll see how we're able to get them into the exhibit Let's see, I can just collect it and release an animal. Do I just click on the pen? I think I do. Uh, yep, plop him right in there. And then let's get the female. We will plop her right in there. Let's take a look at these guys. Honestly, the graphics, I, I enjoy the graphics. They're, uh, they're a nice combination of like a realistic stylized cartoon you know what i mean so like you look at it and you're like yeah that's not 100 percent realistic but it's it's close enough that it's it's believable i've been playing um the two other dinosaur zoo, uh, zoo tycoon ish games uh you've got parkosaurus which i've been doing um, a series on love that game i think the tycoon and building aspect of that game is really really fantastic but of course the graphics are very comical very pastelish very cartoonish uh, and then you've got jurassic world evolution which is on the complete other side of the, of the spectrum and i think that game the models look absolutely fantastic but the actual abilities you have to build parks is a little bit limited um and honestly so far from my limited reaction with this game seems to be a little bit in the middle of both both aesthetically and um graphically right it's a little bit in the middle of both but also what you can do you can do a lot more terrain customization than jurassic world evolution and that's fantastic um and the tycoon aspect so far because it's just alpha doesn't quite have the tycoon gameplay right with the money and the systems and the, and the building and the and, uh, unlocking stuff all that uh, systems and stuff that's much better in parkosaurus currently um, but this game has potential to to really blow it out of the park but yeah, and the graphics look pretty good. Uh, I've got them running on high, um, which high shadow, so everything else is ultra. I had everything running at ultra, and it was a little bit blurry, so there's a little bit of optimization to, to still be had with this game. But of course, alpha, getting there. Um, but the yeah, T-Rex looks good. Can we get a roar, buddy? Give us a roar. No roar. <laughs> He's like, I'm chilling, man. I'm just checking out my house. Very cool. All right. One thing I did also want to mention is just the obscene amount of guests. Look at this. That's so many guests. Like the park just opened and <laughs> we've got all these people. It's a little, a little overtuned, I think. Um, so that'll probably be some of the feedback that I will be giving them is that uh, they need to tone down the amount of people. Just, I mean, look at this. That's insane. <laughs> that is so many people and all I have is, uh, you know, a few shops up and running and, uh, and one, one exhibit here so yeah everybody that's going to be my first impressions and my first episode of this game here of prehistoric kingdom hope you guys enjoyed it i'm a big fan of this game already and really excited to see where it goes from here we will definitely be continuing this this series and knocking out uh, an exhibit for all of them with all the different types of biomes so stay tuned if you want to see all the different things that this alpha has in store i'll definitely be covering all of it and looking forward to the future of this game and giving you guys news updates and stuff and, and all that jazz too so can we get can we get a roar i want a roar to leave out on no they're too happy they're too content i did too good of a job on their exhibit they're like you know this is chill man <laughs> no need to get angry <laughs> all right folks that's going to be this episode uh if you liked it please remember to like comment subscribe and all that good youtube stuff as it really does help out the channel grow and until next time i will see you guys later peace <laughs>